marks out as one as soon as possible, um, and a logistics team who will kind of take charge of what the event looks like on the day um, and what we'll be doing uh, there for the, everything from kind of like transport and the venue right down to the food and the order of the speakers. And Are you going to be our liaison to these people in the way I understand? Yes, sir. Um, do you want to sit down? Yes, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's not set in stone, you can move okay. around it and I'll explain a bit more what we talk about. So, <coughs> um, and then, just before we close the meeting, I'll just talk a little bit about how we're going to communicate between now and the next meeting. Um, so, if that, that all sounds okay to everybody, mm -hmm. um, if we can go around first and just introduce ourselves again, just for the like, benefit of Sarah and uh, people who have awful memories. Um, I'll start with myself, I guess. I'm Ellie, I obviously work at the NAS, an events officer. Um, and it is probably the most enjoyable thing I'm doing at the moment. So <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> for, uh, for coming along. Um, should we go on uh, I'm Olivia. I'm from Birmingham. And I've joined this FIT team to gain experience in marketing and fundraising. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm Senior Events Officer, so I work with Ellie at the NAS. Um, and thanks for having me here today. See what you guys are up to. Um, yeah, excited to hear your ideas. Hi, I'm Leo. I'm uh, a participation. I work at the NAS in participation, and I'm a participation and support officer. And I'm in here to in, do something clever. <laughs> I'm Helen. I recently diagnosed. I wanted to meet more people on the spectrum, and also wanted to have experience of events the word go rather than join in at a late stage. Hello, I'm Natalie, I come from Camberley and I wanted to help contribute to the fundraising campaign for the NAS. I'm Kieran and I'm from York and I signed up because I wanted to find out a bit more and support like, the course that it's been raised for. Well, it depends what day it is, but I'm Daniel, and I'm an ambassador for the National Autistic Society, and I run around like a person who runs around quite a lot, doing things. And I'm also from Canberra, it's funny coincidence, isn't it? Welcome, Canberra. Awesome. Paul, do you want to introduce yourself for you? Well, that's Paul, I do. I work for the National Autistic Society. I was diagnosed when I was 41. And I work in um, person centre planning, I write social stories, I make all the films for the NAS now as well. I just decided it was more interesting than what I was doing. My wife's got a diagnosis, which is how we met. Um, I'll be speaking at the autism show, set up social groups, taught meditation, all the last piece, generally. Around oh yeah, sorry, I forgot that. I'm talking at the autism show as well, so if yeah. you want to come along and watch me, I will be. I'll anywhere, be you, anywhere. 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 Uh, just the bit in the meetings, obviously, first one put down is treat everyone and their ideas with respect. Um, there isn't such a thing as a wrong idea, just maybe something which um, needs to have a bit of a think about, and that's how we work in our events team um, anyway. Um, obviously, do be flexible with your ideas. I know that we've got these proposals that people have spent time putting together, but that's not to say that the proposal will, even if it's the one that we choose, it won't go forward like completely as is written down on paper because people will always have input on certain things um, and certain aspects of it. Um, obviously I've put in here that if people want to see the meeting just like do indicate somehow because it's the only way that everybody gets to speak. Um, you know, not everybody is as confident to just jump in, um, you know, whenever, whenever they feel the need. So do respect that please. Um, uh, obviously, if anyone has a, a support worker, a parent, or a carer with them, um, which I think anyone does, but I think it's worth going over it. It's, you know, people, uh, you guys coming here to express your own opinions, join in by yourselves, and that should be something that, that everyone respects, including us as, as staff members. Um, 
And obviously, please be respectful and aware of the fact that people come from a lot of diverse backgrounds, um, and there'd be absolutely no discrimination on the basis of gender, race, sexuality, or disability, which I'm happy to what are you thinking of in the disability rights movement? But um, obviously, do, do, uh, do take care of that, and that's, that's the one thing we're enforcing really strictly, obviously, um, and that's the same across all of the NAS. Uh, so, without further ado, I'll get the, those bits out of the way. Um, if we wanna, has everyone got their event proposals um, in front of them? Obviously, no, I handed them out, but I didn't take them. There's some at some the back of those. So. They should all be in this pack as well after the uh, after the agenda. Go straight into oh, the hang on, no, I have. No, I have. Yes, I have. Okay. And, yes, I have. and has everyone had a chance to read through them yet? Mm -hmm. um, now, I didn't have any specific way of structuring this because I thought it might be better for people if they'd read through them just to chip in mm -hmm. um, with what they thought about each of the, uh, each of the proposals. Um, but if you like, it will make it easier. We could go through them yeah, one by one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is, that, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah. Okay. So are you okay if we start with yours, Olivia? Yeah. Um, did you want to kind of introduce it at all, or would you like to talk through it? There's um, no. Um, no the way. Okay. Um, so Olivia's one. I think we discussed quite a bit of it at, at the last meeting. Um, it's called Autism Con Festival of the Mind. And oh yeah, I remember from last time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically a, a kind of one day um, kind of exhibition with the kind of arts and crafts and uh, learning festival during the day and a kind of masquerade ball in the evening. Um, it will kind of showcase obviously what, what people on the spectrum can do clearly and, and achieve, but also be a space for people to go and kind of, I guess, enjoy uh, either new hobbies or something that they're quite passionate about already. Um, yeah, and moving on to a kind of unconventional. Um, what was the strap line you used? Unconventional and um, well, was it? Unconventional. unique and unconventional. That was it. Yeah. Um, which I was thinking is really interesting. Uh, strap line. Have you done a tremendous amount of, <laughs> of work on this? So there's quite a few pages, so I go through everything on there if that's okay. But I think we're all quite familiar with with what the proposal is. Yeah. Yeah. So what do people? What do people think? I've got a couple of bits on the, the part of which, which I think you've covered really well actually, pretty, like, impressed with it. There's one part that's basically about sign language um, and um, obviously different speaking languages and stuff like that, so interpreters and the cost of it. We thought about doing packs, like walk around with, if it's going to be set out and structured, mm -hmm. we could have information packs printed up that people could actually just read from and know what's going on in a room instead of sort of like having to have an interpreter with them mm -hmm. in a language, just in, in, in their own native language and stuff like that. So, instead of like, as you said, because the cost of like getting interpreters in, mm -hmm. but if you, if you did the, the brochures of like the event to show people where stuff is within the event, mm -hmm. we could have one specific so they, they don't have to rely on that one, but can still enjoy the events yeah. that are being held that day. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think your idea is, it is it, it's good, it's just how can we, yeah, the question I've got about it is we've got, uh, we have a lot uh, a lot there. Art and craft fair, uh, there are at least 13 activities. Huh? Uh, now, the good thing is there are a lot of activities, but the thing that we've got to think about is how many activities do we have before uh, we avoid getting too stretched out? Uh, because that's the real challenge about this one. I've got a, the last thing that I've got here in that one is the fact that if it's an event where you're not specifically going to be going there to try and get to see everything that's going on, but it's an eventful day that you can pick and choose, it's going to encourage more people to walk through the door, you're going to sell more tickets. The only problem we're going to find is obviously delegating and then getting the right people to volunteer to help support the day's event. Mm -hmm. I think one of the concerns was that if you try and pick a specific thing for somebody to try and organised and they're not there for the day and that's where we're going to find the biggest problems maybe pairing people up as a couple of volunteers per section that we, we did like with i don't know with the, the arts and crafts and stuff like that mm -hmm. and and 
I, don't know, I think it's achievable. Well, I think it's I think it's a really good idea because I think that he's going to encourage a lot more yeah, you get lots of people in, yeah. to come in, and it can just be basically they can walk in as you said. With a, they can come in with all day pass, they can get part day pass or or stuff like certain restricted areas, and that way then you're going to get people that come in just specifically for what they want to come find, mm -hmm. and then you're not going to like try and take it on with the evening meal and stuff like that. If people ain't going to be around for it, then they're not expected to be to catch the meal. Yeah. I like it. Do I have any other thoughts about it? Anything else? The educational talks on Asperger's. What? Um, I mean, we. Uh, I think it's this is the part that is definitely doable. I mean, the autism show uh, does this. You, the chat. Uh, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think it could. It really work. The one thing that I would say to improve on that would be: would there be question and answer sessions? And also, yeah, yeah. would there? Uh, and what would these talks be about? Would they be about awareness, which you can find at uh, at the autism show? So, how do you make these talks different? Let's say talk about wider issues or something like that? Um, I was thinking there could be um, specific topics like um, people's experience with teachers in school and the methods they need for learning, like if they're visual learners or need for the materials. Um, another topic could be um, how easy it is to access benefits, something like that. Yeah. Um, sorry, can I just Did you, you have a second? Oh, I thought you were. No. Oh, cool, sorry. Exactly. No, sorry. I, I think you could speak to our uh, score, uh, autism, which is the sort of uh, MAS's sort of uh, new initiative for people. Uh, on the autistic spectrum to actually give it talk that Yeah, this is it. This is what I was going to say. I mean, they, they're just basically a farm. They have lots of people and they kind of ask, they kind of put it out to tenure, which is annoying sometimes, but still get it. But so, yeah, so if you go to them and say, I've got somebody who can speak on it, so why? They have somebody who can speak on any subject that you can never wish to have them. So if you ask autism. So it's a training module for it's online training for um, businesses and professionals, but it's all delivered and created by people on the spectrum. So that's yeah, that's why you'd be able to get, um, as Dan said, there'd be lots of different speakers on a range of topics. Um, I also think actually that helps with if you were to do call out for speakers on something like social media, that helps with marketing because that's yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's it, pushing yeah. it wider. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I, I went to one of the uh, conferences that Ask Autism put on, Leo was, um, yeah. was there as well, and it was mm -hmm. really an incredible day, and that was a kind of, I guess, educational professionals conference, but it was so much fun as well, it was really absolutely fantastic, and everything obviously on the day was, was organised by people. I heard about it. Yeah, <laughs> in, in, in the NS who, who have autism as well, so uh, it was, yeah, I mean, if we did use something like that, there's a lot of obviously scope and we do have an audience within um, the NAS for it and we've got a bit more leeway I guess to uh, you know also incorporate kind of fun and social yeah. aspects of it that you don't have the chance to do in a professionals conference so I think it'd be quite yeah. up for, for getting involved well, with that. I'm up for doing any kind of talks or anything like that. I mean being a bit cheeky because you, you know me and you know my material you've seen it so I can do anything else. And I know that Dylan who can't make it today has said he'd be really up for and um, performing his poetry then. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I've got to try to get it done. Yeah. Is there anyone first or? No, 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 Dan. Okay, yeah. It, of all the ideas, it, the idea that's the most possible and the most, the one that in theory would be the most the easiest to deliver. Uh, it could also get a lot of people m m on the autistic spectrum involved. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I mean, because we're, I mean, 
think it, yeah, but we're always going to kind of need the volunteers just to do the kind of things at the door and all that kind of things that you you kind of found me out all the time for, you know. So we we'll, yeah, just, yeah, just to get as many people as you can just to on the spectrum there. But I mean, I know you don't all have to have your roles and things like that, but as many people on the spectrum. Yeah, I think this is your thing. And we're, we're only here to help. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, so. Leo saying about well, um, lots of different things going on. Yeah. Now, that, I, I, I agree that that's a, that's a benefit rather than a challenge. What, what you just need to think about then is how can you delegate, so it's almost as if you're, to, for want of a better word, selling space. Mm -hmm. So you say, okay, we've got this, we've got the arts and crafts thing, and we kind of want, you'd want to find somebody to look after that, that, that works in that field. Yeah, that's something. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so you're almost kind of farming each different bit out to somebody else, mm -hmm. um, and then, then it would be the job of, of, of you guys to kind of yeah. manage the overall mm -hmm. thing, um, and so that's, I think, doable. Mm -hmm. Did he go? Okay. okay, I think it's like, um, I don't know, Steam Rally or something like that one, where you've got, obviously, you've got your commercial schools, your entertainment schools, uh, and that's going to be that sort of thing, which is, you know, as you said, it needs to be filled out, but I'm just worried, obviously, because you're asking for volunteers to, it's not somebody employed to go and do it. I think we need a backup plan and that needs to be put in place as soon as possible because you're going to train one person up that's going to be overseeing, say, I don't know, entertainment or lectures or something like that one, and they're not going to be there, or they feel yeah. for own health conditions or whatever, then you need a backup plan for that one because doing it all at the last minute is going to be like running around like hundreds of chickens. Mm -hmm. So if you gave it three people and over, so, over, so, so, uh, to oversee it, people that want to volunteer or help out, then I think that's probably what would look better for it. And it will run smoother, I think. Can we have like a back? Um, can we have like a back of Yeah, sorry, Ben. Uh, my idea for who would run the schools would it would be um, people on the spectrum. It would be their own businesses. So um, if they didn't turn up, it would reflect, reflect badly on them. Yeah, that's um, So they I think they'd be more likely to make sure they was able to run it than if it was all volunteers. Yeah, but I'm, 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 meaning, sorry, I'm meaning more in the sense of that to have all of them stores in place, that someone's going to have to organise that, someone's um, going to have to show them to where they're going to, give them the procedure and sort of what showing them where to go or making sure everything's timed properly, that they're the organisers basically behind the scenes. I have a thought, um, how about a reserve list? So you have like the people who are going in and they have a reserve list to get somebody pulled out? I mean, I know that's not in that gets people's hopes up, but in the, in the real world that you don't, Yep. You've beaten me into the real world, and it's the whole thing about yeah, just having a backup just in case somebody isn't able to turn up. But obviously, give them you know, you've got to be reasonable, give them enough notice. But if they're there, you've got a list of maybe, so then uh, then you're like, you're safe. Then, yeah, and I'm conscious we've got obviously like five proposals to get through. Has everyone kind of said what they want mm -hmm. to say about this one? And obviously, you know, we've gone through proposals, we can always come back to them if we feel there's something that's been missed out. or more questions they want to ask. Um, so the next one on, I believe it's in alphabetical order, um, my surname, is um, Leo's proposal, which is um, definitely the kind of curveball in, uh, in the proposals we receive, but also really exciting. So I don't know, do, do you want to talk about it? Or I want to just say two things. One, the person who I approached has just not got in, don't think he had enough time, which is fair enough. And Saveability haven't got back to me, so I have to chase them up. I think this idea comes from the Red Bull tradition, a, a sporting event that is backed up uh, that almost raised the profile of both uh, both autism and also disability sport. So I think it is the one that if it if it works, could work really great. But that's the emphasis on if it works. There's a lot of things that will need to be sorted out. But I think if we could do something that could really make a massive challenge event, then we could have something that could really give a huge boost for for Rio. Mm. Yeah, could you Yeah. I've only got one with that one there. He's saying that, that as well that January is not the best time to sell and dingies. 
So I, I don't know. That's the only flaw that I saw with it. I think it's a brilliant idea. And well, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to swim, so it scared me. <laughs> I'd burn in the ocean. I was just yeah. thinking, obviously, being in January with the weather and stuff like that, is that going to make it more of a problem? We would, uh, we would possibly have to change. The problem with Jan, it, the winter, the sailing season, and I'm, and and the other sailors want to cover. Like me, it's all it's in theory all year round. But if you want to sail, then it's really in the spring to summer months. I mean, because for one thing, the water's a lot colder. It's also uh, the wind can be. There is always the possibility that the wind can be too high, particularly if you have an off offshore element to it. I mean, that's one thing I'd say is that I've said that with anyway, um, but we don't have to have the event in January, but we do, I think, just have it in the first few months mm. of 2015. It, it so does yeah. need, I mean, for, for financial purposes, it needs to be before it. And also, because, um, because I think you have like, quite a busy year, so to, I mean, it's our event, but we've got to be flexible for you because I know you have this bombastic period between about what March and June when you like three yeah. or four kind of things. So just for that as well, just so the kind of pressures off you a bit, not to have to add that into the the wind mix of them. The window I suggest would be March uh, because that's effectively uh, you're out of February, you're into in. March, which is all time when you're having your informal races and you've got uh, how to put it, it the whole, whole series of class racing is beginning to pick up. So yeah, that was my one of my questions to you, Leo. Is when when's the kind of professional season? For I believe it, it it is from March to September. I mean, in the way that, like, if we were to kind of kick that off, yeah. um, we're doing our event in March. Because, I mean, would we also be encouraging amateur sailors to come, or would be people who've already been with the, a club for a while? It would be. Oh, it would be an open event. It could be amateur sailors. The thing, the thing about this is always the difficulty, because I mean, with my with the sponsored sales that I've done. They are over an extended distance, so because uh, one example to the bridge and and back, which was the sailing at first sponsored sail idea I had and then did, mm. it was on a tight. Let me put it this way: it was on a tidal river, and that means which amateur sailors can do, but it is just people who at least have had the sailing training. I mean, you would probably, with some of the larger boats, you'd probably get a mixture of amateur and experienced crew. So, yeah. mm. uh, if, it, if it was for, um, if it was an open event, would you provide like an hour of lessons before the challenge for people who've never sailed before? That would... I don't think that would happen because it w the uh, thing is absolute beginners, I'm sorry, but uh, if it's uh, beginners, okay, fair enough, but uh, if, uh, maybe if what happens with the London Marathon is there is a sort of briefing that is held a month before, around several months before the event actually takes place. The only problem with that is budget and logistics here. Mm. So I just have one point, and this is a really good idea and I think, but I just think that it's, we, we want to open it up to as many people as possible, and this just seems it's just like a specialist niche, just like people that can say in or get on the boat. I'm not putting your idea down or anything, but it just seems, it just seems too narrow an idea. Mm. So it's one thought about using the um, main event we're going to be able to do this time. If you, if you send it sort of like several months beforehand, you, you plan and organise obviously the, the coordination of the, the people that are coming to the event. 
um, obviously leaves us a, a, a lot of short time. But as for, for interest or feedback, would it be something that we could launch after the main event? Because you're going to get all the people there that are probably going to be in a capsule audience you're going to be able to grab there and then for a, for a future event. I don't, I don't know. Just I think that you're going to obviously time scale, but also just to get a feel of it first of all, because it's as as it's right, it's a really specialist event. And, but I like the idea. I think it's a really good idea. But it's going to take a lot more organising than what we've got experience and time to do at the moment. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So we're too into that. Yeah, it was. The thing is, I think sailing gets almost a bad reputation in that it's supposed to be a niche. In theory, it looks like a niche elitist sport, but it's not. It's far more. Uh, the problem is always access to water. Uh, I mean, in the, but I would say with the whole planning for the event, it, it took months. It was, I'd say I came, when in doing the Orwell Bridge event, we came, it, how to put it, I came, it came up with the idea in late November, late December, uh, the year before, and we did it in the summer of that year. But it's not so much. The also the other thing is to tag on to an event uh, that is currently happening. That's the Plan B route, it, and that would already appeal. So it would effectively it'd be bringing more people from outside to the water, something that would interest uh, sailability and probably uh, there is expertise within the Royal Yachting Association to actually, uh, how to put it, uh, to expand the footprint. Do you have any thoughts on it? Yeah, I If you have any to say on that or if you want to um, the next one, I'll hold that down for you. Yeah. Good timing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I am over timing. Um, well, to me now, right? Yeah, so, so that's your proposal. I mean, do, do you want to say a bit about it, Dan? Well, you can, I mean, uh, you can go in and I'll kind of interject as you're talking sort of thing. No, no, I'm... Okay, yeah, yeah, no, but I think yeah. my um, idea is similar to your idea, I think. Would you say that we fit on the kind of same yeah. similar sort of vein? But um, one of the big kind of ideas I had, which was um, the talking book thing. I don't know what does I don't know what you don't think about that. Having people with autism in kind of so people could go up and ask specific questions about it. I think rather than because you can have people talking and things like that, and that's good. But also have these. This is more of a kind of open way to do it because you don't have to be in a specific moment. It, it can run run throughout the. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. mm. And I think you mentioned like the um, the unique selling point. Ah, this is it. This is the key. This is the absolute rock of my whole thing. Mm. And this is something which I got the idea. I was watching, listening to an episode of re Reunion, and I thought, <laughs> you know, we could do this. I and mean, what it is is getting the remaining founders of ANS. I mean, who doesn't want to see that? If you're in this area, if you if you're associated with this organisation, that isn't that like the like the top thing. Right. And also, and I'd have like a I'd have them talk like reminiscing. I mean, about that how they all started and things like that. But it would be good to hear it from them. But I've never, I've never heard, I've heard it from Joe, Bob, you, and Kate, all the other people. But never from that. Never, it's never the words have never come out of their their mouth. And I think it would be good just to just have that experience. I mean, you know, that's the, and again, it's a it's a money can't buy type of thing, but it's. No, it would only happen like once. It's never to happen again, and that's and that's again. You could with tickets, you could you could bump up the price. And it's, it's, I'm, I I struggled with this for a really long time because I didn't want to have to do the thing we had to hide. But then I realised you've got to bring in the money, and that's it. That's about it. You've got to bring in the money for it. So if we had something like that, you could, you could have like a normal standard ticket week over there, and then you can have that ticket, which is you know that, like a kind of premium ticket. What do people 
I like the idea of the reunion of the living founders. That would be a good thing. It could also be recorded as part of a history project, definitely with the transcript. The only problem, I think, is the, is the sort of, um, it is a talent, and so do we really, there is also autism got a talent. We would have to think, I mean, I can see with the whole sort of founder there and it would be different, but you have to ask the question. What exactly would it be different? Because it could, I mean, the whole living, and also on the living book thing, you, I think, and it's almost, there's a, there's a trap in this that people with autism might feel that, okay, we get, uh, this sort of thing happens on the online forum, and so they might prefer to talk about the subjects they want to talk about. Well, I think well, when we um, well, put down guidelines for that sort of thing, I mean, your you your you lot could write a whole bible about the kind of things that when they're at this stand, the things that they can say, they can say that sort of thing. So we'd have it. There would be it would be a structure, and also about the competitions. I think I may have missed understood myself, I mean, I uh, think competition uh, Yeah, I thought it would be good if we had an event that was more focused on Asperger's. Hmm. Do you think well, people on the spectrum that I know, both autism and Asperger's, do actively sail. So while it, it might be a niche event, it's a niche that a, quite a significant number of people with autism can and do take part in for their reason. In response to your second question, I think in the second point, which is actually a fair one, I think we have to ask a question. Changes to, you may not have heard this, but there are changes to the international diagnostic criteria which folds Asperger's syndrome into a general diagnosis of autism. Now, I have to ask everyone a question. Do, you, do we follow the international criteria in how we re and say that auti the, and do an event that focuses on autism which, because we, we support that autism is part of Asperger's syndrome is part of autism, or do we take a stance that is different and say that Asperger's is a stand, is a separate element in its own right? Can I possibly answer that? Um, I I don't think if this was an NAS event we could go against the government. I think of the beauty of this, and this is the point I want to make. That all of this is we really want this to be your your event. You're creating this, um, and so I think if it's I for me, it is about both. It's about um, it's. I mean, the NAS way of saying it might not necessarily be the best way, which is autism including Asperger's syndrome. Yeah. Um, but um, the to make this as wide ranging as possible. I, for me, I think it has to be both, and that, again, this is just my opinion, um, because there are more, um, so if we were to look at Autscape, for example, that is heavily predominantly Asperger's, um, and Autism's Got Talent is a very separate thing, and I think that's wide-ranging, which, which has a really strong selling point. Um, so that's kind of what I'm saying. And maybe, I thought, just to say one, what you're saying, maybe how, Don't need this, so it can all be linked in. No, that's a good thing. Be, be kept separate if mm. needs be, so if people can go to one area or to all the other, all both. Mm. Mm. Okay. I was going to ask you about one comment after that one as well. I wouldn't want to be separated if they're separate ones. Not necessarily completely separated, but linked it up. I think that obviously
then fine. But if we wanted to give the, the, the event a theme and turn around and say that the theme for the event is awareness of Asperger's, then I think that would probably be, that would come across better. But I wouldn't want to be put into a separate box and that will let you go over here for Asperger's and here for the rest of autism, basically. Mm -hmm. So I think all, all underneath one, one, one roof. But the theme that you could be the under part of it, which we I think we discussed at the first meeting, was to raise more awareness. But if we wanted to focus on raising more awareness with Asperger's, then I think that that could be done under the event and call it still an autistic fundraising yeah. event. Keep it together, but yeah. have Some areas. Somehow split it, but keep it one under one banner. And well, if you, if you got, you got, you got your, your title basically yeah. for, the, for the event, but then on the underline, raising awareness for yeah. Asperger's, then that's not turn around saying that it's a Asperger's event, mm. it's an autistic event, yeah. but we are raising yeah. more awareness for Asperger's. I don't know, I think it's probably might smooth it that way. I mean, the, old, the, other, the other point there is that actually this could be a forum to have that discussion with the public. As in, so, yeah, the WHO changed their definition rules, and actually they're not using the term as well as the single new diagnosis is saying it's high functioning autism. Um, but clearly, there's, there's people um, who have access. Yeah. That, that, that identify that. Yeah, yeah. So this might be a forum to have that. Like, so it's for everybody, mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. that could be part of, that could be, for example, one of the main talks. Well, so, uh, yes, we could have like a kind of time. I was, I was just going to say, we've well, obviously a lot of people are getting quite light into this discussion. Well, obviously, we don't have like loads of time, as we said, we were taking a break, but I don't mind like extending the one we have to meeting a little bit if you guys don't people are getting, because we've got a couple more proposals to talk about. So just something to be aware because we said we would take a break in like ten minutes now. <laughs> um, well, I think it's so probably better to shelve that question and move on to the next because that's a yeah. really, really important question. And I don't think that we'd be able to do it justice now. But I think whatever it seems to me that people are very passionate about that. So whatever event you choose, mm. we need to have that discussion. Mm. Yeah, are people happy with, with yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next proposal that we had on this from Helen, and um, did you want to say if you read that or would you rather yeah, actually say it? Yeah, cool. Um, so <laughs> Helen's the second one that has a, a kind of split of daytime and evening um, events, which again, I think we see kind of similar themes what Olivia and, and Daniel have been proposing. Um, but I think we're more of a heavy focus on like art, mm -hmm. arts and crafts yeah. during the day, sort of creative aspect of, um, of the day. Um, I think there would also be kind of talks and, and awareness raising activities going on as well. I think we'll say you kind of go around a lot of it. And if you do want to particularly go to the talks sit there and, and watch them on all day, you could go and um, take part in some of the craft events as well. Um, and then for the evening to have a kind of um, a masquerade ball or a kind of sit down, dinner, and dance, um, and with the entertainment being provided wherever possible by people who uh, have autism. Or Asperger's. Um, is that is that a fair kind of representation? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do people have any thoughts about that? Yeah. Uh, would that be marketed as a separate event to the daytime event, as it's a change in venue? Well, I've been to places where we've had a convention during the day and then disco and evening meal in the same hotel. Mm -hmm. So it can either be, which could cut down on costs. Yeah. But also, if it had to be a different venue, that is that option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this idea is interesting. The, I like the, <laughs> I like the idea of sort of, uh, sort of it, the, the different elements being focused on, and actually, if you didn't dance idea, that could there is, I'm not sure whether any of you are familiar with it, but Beats is actually an event up in Roycelip of all places, is, but that has tried to do, uh, I think, the problem, the challenge that I see in it, and this is not. Uh, I'm not really trying to be rude about it. Is it too compartmentalised? It almost 
you're trying to uh, to show uh, you're trying to appeal to two uh, two different or audiences where maybe it would be far better to merge the two together. That's just what I'm used. I'm used to that sort of event, so that's why I focus on that. But I'm happy to get out of the box, as it were. Yeah. I like I like I like the format of, of that style with the two 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 events. It's, it goes a little bit back to where we were before, and I'm not going to obviously with the political side of it. But the, one of the, to the topics that we brought up um, was that we wanted to influence more of the um, like local council, the police. Um, nurses, doctors, etc., stuff like that. So the evening event could be themed towards them. We've had the entertainment, the enjoyment during the day with the like, um, obviously mm. with the crafts, etc., stuff like that. But then come evening time, it could be sort of like a, as, as it is a masquerade ball. Sit down, invite them people to come along, with a few people giving just an introduction, not in depth like discussion about it, but just a, a, a doorway for them to go and then think when they've walked away from it. But then it can also be a light-hearted, enjoyable event. So you have got the two two parts, but I think that they'll coexist and work really well because people you're going to have doing speeches and stuff like that can then probably come to the evening event and just sort of like give a brief talk to to, to open their doors. I don't know. Yeah, I really, really I I like that. And it reminds, the evening event reminded me of your um, what's it called, Spectrum Ball. Because I think it's very similar and stuff like that from what I know. Looking for a winner, like that. Is it? Is it similar? A little bit lower budget than that. Yeah, a little bit lower budget, but is it kind of in some that kind of vein? I think I guess the difference here is that this, for me, to, to these all, all of these ideas, that they're, they're for people, for people with autism mm -hmm. and their families, and or um, people who work with people with autism. Actually, the spectrum is actually just about the autism. Very yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So, but so the format, but no, but yeah, the format, yeah. But yeah. That's no, what I really agree. I love the way you said the common one with history for them. Well, exactly. But that's to me, that's the beauty of this is that there's, it's, it's got elements of awareness raising, it's got elements of inclusion, um, and so it's got elements of education, of teaching people various different things. I think, um, for me, I would kind of agree with Leo that I think if we were. You would you would need to be very clear whether or not it's for people with autism and their families, or it's for professionals. There are things for professionals, but not like this. Mm. So I don't know if you could do. I think it's not. I'm not saying. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello.